This is the best budget graphics card of 2025. At least that's what all the experts are saying. Now they have their fancy labs and teams of people to run all their tests for them. And we don't have that here. I say we, but it's I like, I'm just a one man show here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test this thing for 24 hours. Just me chilling, having fun, playing some games. Real world testing with real world results. And we're gonna see how good it performs. And instead of using that really expensive 9800X3D that all those people use, we're gonna use a moderately budget CPU, the Ryzen 5 7500F. All inside our nice test bench here, which is in a very cool Fantex NV5. And the version of the card we're gonna be using is the Asus Tough Gaming 9060XT. Asus did send this card out to us just to test and make a few TikToks on. So I'm not obligated to say anything about this card. They just, you know, said have fun with it. So that's what we're gonna do. All these tests are gonna be run at 1440p. So let's see how good this card really is and if it's actually worth the hype that the big dogs are saying it is. Now, first up, we tried some story mode games, starting with Monster Hunter Wilds. I've actually never played this game before and I really wanted to, so I thought it was a perfect opportunity. I have zero idea what I'm doing, but I did put the settings on ultra and I used zero upscaling. And we were able to get like around 50-ish FPS when fighting inside this cave. Then we bumped it up to high settings to get 55 FPS and we got really close to 60 at medium settings but it wasn't quite super solid it dipped down to like 58 a few times after that i really wanted to try dune awakening again using this as an excuse to chill and play some video games dune awakening was pretty tough on this gpu even with the 16 gigabytes of vram on ultra settings outside running around we got like 40 ish fps although bumping it down to high settings did get us like around 55 to 50 ish so i'm sure medium settings would get us close to that 60 fps mark once again then we went to try the Last of Us Part 2 Remastered. Everybody keeps telling me that this game is like super awful on graphics cards, and I'm not really sure what that's about. I couldn't figure out how to turn off FSR for this game, so this is the only game that I really ran FSR testing on. So with FSR, this game ran super smooth. We pretty much put it on like maxed out settings. And the FPS was kind of all over the place. In the snowball fight early in the game, I was getting close to 80. But then when I got abandoned in the wilderness in the snow, it sometimes dropped all the way down to 60. Either way, it was smooth for a story-based game. I think it would be just fine. I also played a game of Helldivers 2. And I just played on the default max setting, so I think it maybe had upscaling. I don't really know. I got 70 FPS. It was smooth and it was fun. But my brother wanted to play a game of that before I did anything else. So I stopped to play a game with him and just thought I'd throw it in there. But after playing those three games, I was kind of hungry, so I took a break for lunch, but I didn't want to waste time. So while I was eating lunch, I did run two built-in benchmarks, and that was Cyberpunk 2077. This game still runs super easy as long as you don't turn on ray tracing. So at the max settings with no ray tracing and no upscaling, this card was able to pull a solid 74 FPS. Turn on ray tracing though, and that's a totally different story. Ray tracing medium, we were only able to get like 37 FPS. So you will have to use upscaling if you wanna use ray tracing with this card. And we also ran the built-in benchmark on Black Myth Wukong while we were finishing up our lunch. No frame gen, no upscaling on any of this. And we tried very high settings, which was like 38 FPS. Then we ran the built-in benchmark again on high settings and got like 50-ish FPS. And finally on medium settings, we were able to get 63 FPS. I think there's a trend going here. But that was enough for story-based games. I finished my lunch and I was ready to dive into some competitive gaming because even though I'm bad, I just, I like the competition. So we cranked up some Apex Legends first on absolute max settings at 1440p. And I did play the battle royale mode even though it's not my favorite because that's what the people wanted. And so we got like 180 to 200 FPS at max settings on the open world battle royale type map. But then I turned everything down to like low or medium and we got solid FPS experience around like 280 to even 300 FPS, which Apex Legends does cap out at as long as you type in the code in Steam. Then we moved on to Marvel Rivals. Even though it's a competitive game, this hero shooter is super demanding. So even with our 16 gigabytes of VRAM, running this thing at high settings was a lot to handle. And we only got 80 to 90 FPS. Now keep in mind this was with zero FSR. When we dropped it down to medium, we got like 90 to 100 FPS, 
Now the game is smooth with these settings, even dropping down to low. We got like close to 120 FPS, but this is again, no upscaling. So it's just super natural. The input delay is what you're getting here. So with 120 FPS, if you did want to turn on frame gen or you wanted to turn on upscaling, since your base FPS would be around 120, you would get a super awesome experience if you wanted to turn on those features. But one trick that I have found with Marvel Rivals to squeeze out a little bit more FPS is to go in and turn off the lighting settings. Even though ray tracing's not on, these lighting settings do really kill your FPS. And we squeezed a little bit more out getting closer to that 130, 140-ish mark. But then it's on to dropping from the skies in Warzone. I play the Resurgence game mode because I'm a loser. And in Warzone Resurgence, we actually got some really cool FPS numbers. We started out with ultra settings, again, no upscaling, no frame generation, and we got like 100-ish FPS. Then we tried the balance settings, which got us closer to like 120, which I know console plebes will be saying that, you know, well, that's what I get with a $500 console. Again, we're not using upscaling, so your input delays better. You can change your field of view, which we also had maxed on all these games, which does affect your FPS, by the way. But then we dropped it down to basic settings and we got like 140 to 160, which is a super smooth experience. And I got the closest I'd ever got to winning a game of Resurgence, I think. But then it was on to a real man's game, CS2. CS2 is an ultra competitive game. It's been around for like a hundred years, it feels like. Well, I mean, not CS2 itself. They rebranded, you know, or whatever they did. Anyway, I like this game from time to time and we were able to play it at some super smooth frame rates. Now my overlay wouldn't work for CS2 so it's kind of in green letters in the upper right of the screen and if you play on very high settings that kills your FPS numbers on CS2 but me as a casual gamer I like the way it looks. You get like 150 to 160 but I always drop mine down one setting to high settings that normally gives me really good FPS numbers. We got pretty much close to 240 the whole time with that and that's good gaming for me. I know the pros use some weird resolution and 1080p and all that jazz. I'm not a pro, guys, and, and you probably aren't either. Hate to tell you. But anyway, moving on to everyone's favorite game, Fortnite. Well, maybe not everybody, but anyway, I like Fortnite. I finally learned how to build on keyboard and mouse. Not great, but I'm getting there. And we played on DX12 and performance mode. And you get super smooth experiences either way you do this. As long as you use competitive settings, that means you turn everything off except for view distance. You put that on far. And whether you're playing at 4K, 1440p, or 1080p, you get a super smooth experience. Again, I think the sweet spot is 1440p. And 1440p on DX12, we got a solid like 240-ish FPS. But on performance mode, 1440p, we got like over 300 FPS. Super awesome with this combo. Just remember these last two games that we mentioned are very CPU dependent as far as those really high FPS numbers, but we still used a pretty cheap CPU with the Ryzen 5 7500F. Overall, I don't think you can go wrong with this graphics card, but if you want to see a graphics card that's a little more expensive, but everybody hated, you could go check out this one that I also tested for 24 hours. 